Welcome to another video. This is a depressed cubic equation. Why is it depressed? Because there is no quadratic term in this equation. We went from x cubed to just x. There is no x squared. Well, if you can get your cubic equation to look like this, then you can use the cubic formula. That's why this is special. Now, there's a quadratic formula Almost everybody who went to high school knows about it or even knows it, ha has it memorized. But the cubic formula, even those who are aware of it, don't care about it. Maybe because it doesn't make sense or it looks too complicated. Well, I want to make it not as complicated as you think. Let's get into the video. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to use this depressed cubic to find the cubic formula in a very easy to follow way. So let's start. What I'm going to say is, you see this, when you solve for this and you get x, that is the root of this quadratic. Let's assume we don't know what it is, what we don't know, but let's assume it is the difference between two numbers. Let x be a minus b. This might look a little different from what you're used to, but you see this is the method of obtaining the formula that I find the best to understand and to follow. So let's try and write this, okay? Then x cubed is the same thing as a minus b cubed because we said let x be a minus b. We're gonna come back to know what a and b are, okay? But what we have is, this is equal to, if you ex expand this, you're gonna get a cubed minus b cubed, and then you're gonna have minus three ab times a minus b. Okay, this is algebra. If you cube this out, this is what you can factor it into, okay? Now see what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this as, I'm going to move everything over here so that what we have will be x cubed. I'm going to move this term over here. It's going to become plus 3ab times a minus b. But remember we said a minus b is x. So I'm just going to write x here. And then I'm going to move a cubed minus b cubed back here. It's going to be minus a cubed minus b cubed. Something like this. Okay? I need it to look like that. So we can keep following. Now I'm going to name everything that I have. Actually, I can switch this to be b cubed minus a cubed. But it doesn't matter. Okay? At this point, what I have here looks like this. It's just that I must tell myself that P is whatever is multiplying X, which in this case is 3AB. And the constant term Q is what I have here. So that Q is equal to minus, or I can put the minus here and then write this as A cubed minus B cubed. That's, I think that's a better way to present. So minus Q is A cubed minus B cubed. Now I've gotten the things that I need. The equation we have is written in terms of P and Q. So we don't want A and B showing up in what we're doing. So let's write A in terms of, or let's write B in terms of A actually. So we know that B from here is going to be P over 3A. Hmm. And what does that tell us here? That tells us that minus Q is going to be A cubed minus, what did we say B was again? P over 3A. So if we cube it, it's going to be P cubed over 27A cubed. 27A cubed. If I multiply every term by A cubed, because I want to create a quadratic here, 
I'm going to end up with minus a cubed q. I multiply this by a cubed, I'm going to get equals a cubed squared. And then multiply this by a cubed, it's just going to be minus p cubed over 27. Nothing else has changed. So from here, <clears throat> I can actually rewrite this and write this as a cubed squared. I move this over here, minus a cubed q minus p cubed over 27. Okay, now this is where I've got my quadratic in terms of a cubed, so I can say let t be equal to a cubed. So this becomes t squared minus qt. Is it minus? When I moved this over, oh, this is plus. Oh, it's plus. Come on. That would have been a major mistake. And so I moved this over here, so it has to be plus, and this is still minus, and this is minus p cubed over 27 equals zero. As you can see, I have a quadratic in terms of t, and I can use the quadratic formula to find what my t is. Okay, so we got t equals minus b, which is minus q, plus or minus the square root of b squared is gonna be q squared minus 4ac, that's four times one times this is gonna be um, minus 4ac, but c is minus, so this sign becomes plus 4p cubed over 27. All over two, <laughs> all over 2a, but the 2a is gonna be just two. So based on what I have here, t, we said t is a cubed, so I just want to save space. I'm going to write a cubed instead of t. So we have a cubed will be equal to, if I split this here, I'm going to have minus q over 2 here, minus q over 2, plus or minus. Now because I've split it, this 2 will be under this, but I can push the 2 under the radical sign so it becomes 4. Remember, 2 is the square root of 4, so if I push it in here, this will become the square root of q squared over 4, plus, this also will take a 4 under, but when this 4 comes in here, it's going to cancel the 4 on top, so what I have left is just p cubed over 27. This is my a cubed. That means I can find my a, a is equal to the cube root of minus q over 2 plus or minus the square root of q squared over 4 plus p cubed over 27. So let's go back to the beginning. Remember we said the root of this depressed cubic equation is a minus b. That was our assumption. We found the first part of it, which is a, and that's it. Now let's go find the second part of it. The second part of it is b. And what did we say b was again? We can use this to find our b, or we can use this to find our b. I think this is the easier one to use to find b, and you're going to see why. It's because minus q is equal to a cubed minus b cubed. We already have a cubed here. If you want to find b cubed, you can say that b cubed, move it here, is a cubed plus q. Okay, so let's go here. Oh, that was, that was too close. That was too close, but we survived. Okay, so we know from here that b cubed equals a cubed plus q, which will be equal to, what is a cubed? This is our a cubed, so it's going to be minus q over 2 plus or minus the square root of q squared, of minus, sorry, 
the square root of q squared over 4 plus p cubed over 27 and we're going to be adding q to it plus q now notice that when you add minus q over 2 to q you get q over 2 so this is equal to so we have b cubed equals q over 2 plus or minus the square root of q squared over 4 plus p cubed over 27. That's what our b cubed is. So it means if we want to find b, we just need to take the cube root of both sides. So I'm going to just delete this here and put the cube root sign over it equals the cube root. Nice. Perfect. So we found the root of this. But you know, because when you take a cube root and then you have plus or minus inside, there's so many options that are going to show up. But the people who did the work from the beginning, I think the name is Scipioni. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Scipioni and Tartaglia, Tartaglia were the two who first worked on it. And then um, Cardano was the one who published it. And that's why it's called Cardano's formula, okay, because the other two did not publish it, but they did the original work. But when they did it, they noticed that this plus or minus is just a repetition. It's like taking absolute values of several parts, and you notice that only two of them will work, or only three of them will work. So what we have in essence is that as long as one of them is plus and the other is minus, it works. So what is x? From here, we know that x will be equal to a minus b, which in this case, x equals, what's our a? It's this, we're going to write it. It's the cube root of minus q over 2 over 27. Minus, so I'll put the minus sign here, over 27. Okay, now, there's something slightly different. Because this is a cube root, we can move the minus inside. So if we move the minus inside, this minus goes to sit in front of this q over 2. And this minus will go and change this sign. So instead of it being plus or minus, it's going to become minus plus. So what we have is a minus here, just to look like this. And this will become a plus because plus times minus is still a minus. So we haven't changed anything. And the minus has gone in. We'll change this to a minus plus. So instead of plus minus, it becomes minus plus. But like I said, this is exactly what you have here. It's just a question of which sign you're choosing. So you can actually do whatever you want. One of them is plus and one of them is minus at any time. Okay, so we can say instead of doing plus or minus, minus plus, let's just keep this one as plus, let's keep this as minus, because everything else is the same. This is the cubic formula. Now, not in this video, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to convert a regular cubic, a standard cubic equation into a depressed cubic equation, where you're going to get rid of the quadratic, because it only works when it is of this form. And then we can talk about, after that, other things that could come up when you have equal roots, real roots, um, how many real roots you're going to have, how many equal roots you're going to have, whatever else could come out of this. Leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.